In everyday life, we usually use the word organic to mean a product that has been grown without the aid of fertilizers such as ammonium nitrate. In the context of chemistry, the strict definition is the enormous class of molecules that are based on carbon, and many of which are involved in the process of, processes of life. If we take the group of molecules that are based only on carbon and hydrogen, these are called hydrocarbons. Fuels such as butane and octane and candle wax are hydrocarbons. Their molecules consist only of different numbers and arrangements of carbon and hydrogen atoms. If we widen the group to include molecules based on carbon and hydrogen, but also including oxygen, nitrogen and a few other elements, we reach the entire class of organic molecules. And it's figuring out how to extract or make these and studying their properties that constitutes the field of organic chemistry. So does the everyday meaning of organic make sense? Well, inorganic compounds, that is not organic, includes all ionic compounds. So ionic fertilizers such as ammonium nitrate and potassium sulfate are not organic compounds. So it is true to say that organically farmed produce has not been fertilized with inorganic fertilizers. However, whether or not inorganic fertilizers are used, all living things are organic by nature. Almost every molecule in your body and the bodies of all organisms is based on carbon and hydrogen. And this also means that the concept of organic water makes no sense, since water is not a carbon-based molecule. In this unit, we're looking at simple organic molecules, the hydrocarbons, and a variety of other kinds of organic molecules that can be made with a few extra oxygens and nitrogens. The place to begin with all of this lies in the carbon atom. How does carbon bond? Well, remember that carbon is a non-metal and forms four covalent bonds. According to Vespa, the best way to arrange four covalent bonds to minimize repulsion is in a tetrahedron, with a bond angle that's generally 109.5 degrees. The simplest example of this is the methane molecule, one carbon bonded to four hydrogens arranged in a tetrahedron. This ball and stick model shows you the bond angles more clearly, but the space filling model gives you more of an idea of what the molecule would actually look like if it were large enough to see. So that's methane with one carbon, but it's possible to have two carbons joined together. Now, each carbon must form a total of four bonds, so we fill in the remaining bonds with hydrogen. So the formula for this compound, the next simplest hydrocarbon from methane, is C2H6, and its name is ethane. The next biggest has three carbons, it's called propane. The next has four carbons, it's called butane. Now, before we go any further, we need to look at a couple of ways of drawing these molecules because they become quite large. So the simplest way of representing a molecule is the molecular formula that you already know. This has the advantage of being easy to write, but it gives you no information about how the atoms are joined to each other. So butane, for instance, would be written as C4H10. You've encountered this problem before, and the way we solved it was with Lewis structures, or structural formulae. Here, each line represents a covalent bond with two electrons shared between the two atoms. This is the most explicit way of drawing a, the structure of an organic molecule. However, sometimes you don't want to be bothered drawing out all the bonds, but you do still want to show which atoms are bonded to which. In this case, you might use a condensed structural formula. Here, you show each carbon individually, and you group the hydrogens that are attached to it. So you could write CH3 or CH2, for instance. The bonds between the carbons can be shown explicitly or not, depending on how condensed you want your formula to be. If you're interested mainly in the carbon skeleton of the molecule and not in the hydrogens, you could use a skeletal or stick formula. Here, only the bonds between the carbon atoms are shown. The hydrogens are implicit, that is, you assume that the reader knows that any missing or invisible bonds are actually to hydrogens. Skeletal formulae are mostly used for more complicated molecules when drawing a structural or condensed formula would not clearly show the molecule's shape. Lastly, never draw a structure like this. It's a crazy combination of a skeletal and a structural formula, and it doesn't mean anything. If you draw the carbon atoms explicitly, then you must draw the other, other atoms as well.